since the failed coup d'etat attempt of the Turkish government back in 2016, NBA center Enes Kanter has been an outspoken critic of the Turkish government and Turkey's president Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Kanter is a follower of Fethullah Gulen and the Gulen movement. Kanter is a longtime follower of Gulen, a 76-year-old preacher and outspoken critic of Turkey's president. For the past few decades, Gulen has lived in exile in rural Pennsylvania, but that hasn't stopped Erdogan from labeling him and his followers terrorists. Erdogan is using his power to abuse people, and that's what's really making me, you know, driving me crazy. He doesn't do nothing wrong. He's always right. He's always perfect. If you don't believe in that, then he wants you to be out of the country, or he will put you in a jail if you keep uh, talking about it. Cantor's one of Turkey's most famous athletes. So his political views, which he often shares on social media, have enormous reach. And his opinions haven't gone unnoticed by Erdogan's regime. As a result of his criticism, Cantor's family were forced to publicly disown him to not be imprisoned. He's technically not allowed to have communication with them, otherwise they will be sent to Turkish jail. Two weeks after Turkey canceled Cantor's travel documents, it jailed his father for almost a week, even though his parents have publicly disowned him. Cantor hasn't spoken to them in more than a year. They put a letter out there and say we disowned Enes because he's speaking out against Erdogan. If they didn't send that letter out, then they will be in a jail last year. Right. Although recently, I remember seeing a clip that he was somehow communicating with his brother, but I just can't find it. Later on, in May of 2017, Ennis was on tour hosting basketball camps across Asia and Europe when all of a sudden his Turkish passport was revoked and he was temporarily stranded in Romania. What's up world? Just wanted to say we are in Romania and they said they canceled my passport by a Turkish embassy. You know, they've been holding us here for hours by these two police. Uh, you know, because the reason behind it is just, of course, my political views, and the guy who did it is, you know, the Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president of Turkish uh, Turkey. And, uh, you know, just you guys know him by, you know, he's attacked the people in uh, Washington. He's a bad, bad man. He's a dictator, and he's the uh, Hitler of our century. So I will uh, keep you posted, guys, but just pray for us, and uh, I'll tell you guys what's going on. Appreciate it. With the help from different government agencies and the OKC Thunder, Cantor flew from Romania to London and then to the U.S. Since that time, Ennis Cantor has played on three NBA teams, including the New York Knicks, the Portland Trailblazers, and the Boston Celtics. Anytime one of those teams have had an international game in London or even a game in Toronto, Canada against the Raptors, Cantor has had to miss them for the fear that he would be arrested or killed by Turkish officials. He's considered a terrorist by the Turkish government for his support of the Gulen movement and his criticism of Erdogan. So I agree with Ennis. Erdogan is bad. But how did Erdogan get into power in the first place? And how does this relate to Ennis Kanter being in a cult? Well, for that, we must look at Fatula Gulen and his movement. And I, tr I visit him once every two or three weeks. And uh, he's a, you know, old man who lives a simple life in P Pennsylvania. And if I look at him, he doesn't even have a parking ticket. Gulan is a Turkish Islamic scholar and preacher who in the 1970s and 80s started many religious schools and organizations across Turkey to promote his teachings and ideas. His ideas became the Gulan movement and his followers are now referred to as the Gulanists. Gulenists are encouraged to join government institutions like police departments, intelligence agencies, and judiciaries. The organization has millions of followers in Turkey and thousands of members in the Turkish government that many people can't even identify. To the normal, everyday Turkish citizen, it is a religious cult that is involved in decades of government corruption. Gulenists have persecuted non-religious Turks by using blackmail and government institutions to remove them from their jobs. Back before Erdogan was Prime Minister of Turkey, the country was ruled by the Kamalist Deep State Government Organization. Fatula Gulen and the Gulenists aligned with Erdogan's Justice and Development Party to remove the previous government organization and establish a new deep state government with Erdogan being the prime minister. The Gulenists and the government were cool until 2012, where they had a falling out. Then, a silent civil war happened within the government until the coup attempt in 2016. As a result, Erdogan went full dictator and started purging Gulenists from their government positions. 
Gulan himself has been residing in the U.S. since 1998, and there's no hard evidence that he was involved in the coup attempt, but his followers definitely were. So moral of the story is, Erdogan is a dictator, which is bad. Gulan is a leader of a religious cult that encourages government corruption, which is bad. And Enes Kanter is in that cult, which is bad. So in the rare instance that Kanter watches this video, next time you go and talk about Erdogan persecuting Turkish people, make sure you mention that you are in an Islamic cult that has persecuted secular Turks for decades and that helped Erdogan get into power in the first place. So, what's up everybody? We are here at Adamas and there's Turkish people, pro-Erdogan people, are, are actually uh, attacking us right here. What hurts me the most is other Turkish players in the league. Mm. We have we have Arsan Ilyasova, we have Jedi Osman in Cleveland, we have uh, Furkan Korkmaz in Philly. Whenever we go against them, they don't say a word. I actually, really? I actually try to talk to them. I'm like, hey, dude, like, what's up? How you doing? No answer. Because like when I, I try to actually like, because like they might like be scared of like a, you know, Turkish government that if they see a picture or video of us talking of something, then they might be in trouble, whatever. So like I actually cover my mouth with a jersey and just try to talk to them. They turn their face the other way, you know? That was a position. And these are guys. These are guys <clears throat> you've known your whole life, right? I know, especially Ersan. I played with him in the same team at OKC. I played with him in a national team. Jedi and Furkan play with my brother in national team, so I know him from long time. I actually like whenever they get hurt, I message him on Instagram and say, "Hey, get well, brother." But no answer. But like, that's the thing that hurts me the most because like, they're just scared. They don't know any better. But whenever yeah. I sit down and have a conversation, uh, try to have a conversation with him in a game, uh, no answer. That's probably the, that hurts me the most. Now, Ennis, maybe these players don't talk to you because they're scared of what Erdogan would do to them and their families. Or maybe they don't agree with your stance or your beliefs and the cult that you are a part of. If you think that I misinterpreted the situation... I would love to talk to you and Mr. Gulan about your beliefs and get some clarification. I live in Pennsylvania myself, and according to the internet, I'm about an hour away from where Mr. Gulan lives. So hit me up. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comment section your thoughts on the situation and if I got anything wrong. Thanks for watching. Yeah, so I agree with Ennis on a former NBA player, Hito Turgulu. He seems like a sellout. Have you and Hito been able to mend anything or? Uh, no, not really. I mean, obviously, Hito is kind of uh, a love dog to a president. You know, he's, uh, I will say it's, it's very sad because he was my really good friend. But now just seeing him uh, picking the wrong side and making really, really wrong de decisions, it's, it's very sad. But I just, it's, it's sad because he, he picked uh, money over uh, principle. He picked money over principle. That's why he wanted to be on the president side. But you know what? He knows what's going on over the wrong. And uh, it's, it's sad that that's why I call him a laptop.